I have vivid memories of this. Uh, there was Constable Wally Rohack from the Regina Police Service who uh, came into our class, and I'm going to guess I was probably in about grade three or grade four. And uh, Constable Rohack came in, and he was, he, to me, he was eight feet tall, and he had big black high, high boots on and a black leather strap in his uniform, and he spent, seemed like hours with us talking about traffic safety and bicycles, and I remember Elmer the safety elephant was the, uh, was the mascot of the day, and uh, I think it had an impact on me. At the time when I was getting into the labor force, police services weren't hiring anyone. Um, it was very, very tough to get into police work in the mid-80s or early 80s. Uh, and I got lucky, really. The, uh, the Estevan Police Service had a little tiny ad in the Regina Leader Post back in February of 1983. And I thought, my, what are my chances? And I had never even been to Estevan, but I thought, well, I put a resume together and sent it off. And uh, sure enough, uh, I got a call and ended up going down to Estevan and going through the process. and the physical and the interviews and all that and uh, lo and behold the sun and the moon and the stars all aligned and I became a member of the Estevan Police Service in 1983. While on a training course with the Estevan Police I had opportunity to speak to a number of members that were with the Saskatoon Police. A couple of them encouraged me to apply here and I think I kind of got lucky again because in uh, October of 1988 uh, a vacancy became available here in Saskatoon and well that's almost 22 years ago and here I am. In 2000, I competed for a position with the Vice Unit, and uh, I don't think there was anybody else in the competition, so <laughs> I was lucky enough to win that job and uh, spent three years in Vice, uh, which was, you know, a lot of fun. It was very, very different from patrol work. It was a plain clothes assignment. We got to wear our hair long, and uh, you see policing from a different side. Some of it's uh, undercover work. I left uh, Vice in 2003 and went to a new section that the chief of the day had introduced and that was called the Community Liaison Unit. Myself and uh, nine other members applied, it was a unit of ten, and we worked out of the Little Chief uh, building, the old gas station on 20th Street, so that, that in itself was, a, was an experience. That same year, 2005, I was transferred to Human Resources. Uh, in those days, the training sergeant and the recruiting sergeant was one job, and uh, I inherited that. In 2009, I got promoted to staff sergeant, and at that point uh, was asked if the Specialized Uniform Operations Division interested me. There's a number of sections that fall under Specialized Uniform Operations Division. They include the weekend support or the ComSat support shift. Uh, the canine unit, the specialty teams, which consists of ERT, the uh, explosive disposal unit, and the public safety unit. And then, of course, there's the traffic unit. Some would say I'm a thorn in one side. I, I won't accept things for what they are, and I tend to question why things are a certain way, and can we do them better? And I can remember having this conversation with this particular sergeant, and uh, I think I frustrated him to the point where he said, if you think you can do it better, why don't you run for office? So I took him up on the challenge and uh, I ran uh, as a, a representative at large for the Esteban Police Association. That was in 1984. Uh, I went on to be the vice president of the association in Esteban prior to leaving Esteban. Uh, when I came to Saskatoon, I uh, became interested in the provincial level of the police associations, which is called the Saskatchewan Federation of Police Officers. And in 1989, I became the secretary treasurer for the Saskatchewan Federation of Police Officers. So in 1998, I threw my name in the hat for president of the Canadian Police Association and again was lucky enough to have the support of my peers across the country and became the president of the CPA and I held that uh, position from 1998 until 2003. So the first 20 years or first 19 years of my career was sort of split between actual police work and association work and there were certain days and weeks and months where I wasn't sure exactly which was my full-time job. A lot of people think that police work in itself is risky and dangerous. Um, you, know, I, you know, I suppose you, it's how you look at it, but uh, just to compound that, I got very interested in uh, skydiving. I uh, made over 300 jumps, I ended up being an instructor and a coach, and uh, uh, I even at one point ended up being the president of the Prairie Sky Masters Club, so um, that was like a, a big part of my extracurricular activity back in the, uh, in the 90s. I also spent a little bit of time with the Saskatoon Police uh, Pipes and Drums. 
because I hadn't been in Saskatoon for more than two or three days and Staff Sergeant retired uh, Bob Morton grabbed me and said, didn't you used to be with the Regina Lions band? And I said, yes. And he said, good, be at band practice on Wednesday. <laughs> and I ended up being the bass drummer for the Saskatoon Police Pipes and Drums. And that was, uh, that was a gig that I held on to for about three or four years and had a great time with them. I'm an avid hunter, <laughs> not so much a big game anymore, but uh, there is uh, a number of us within the police service and some of our, my close friends are now actually going on to retirement, but we still stay connected through our uh, interest in hunting and uh, pretty much from September right through till December you can find us out in a field uh, after the ever elusive uh, Canada goose or snow goose or duck. So those are things that, that uh, keep me out of trouble and uh, sort of add to the whole work-life balance that's so important when, when you work in an area that uh, you know, can be sometimes stressful, sometimes a little bit uh, pressure oriented. Policing has been and continues to be very, very rewarding uh, for me professionally. I think it's like anything, uh, you get out what you put in. So if you come into policing with a realistic view of what you're getting into, and dismiss what you may see on TV or, or you know, in the movies, because that's not reality. Uh, police work um, is not easy. Uh, it's, uh, it's challenging. Uh, there's probably not an industry in this country that has as much oversight. When you put this outfit on and get into one of those cars with the lights on top and drive down the street, and I, I think everyone would agree, everyone looks at you. If you are wearing this uniform and you walk through the Midtown Mall or down the street in downtown Saskatoon, everyone on the street or in the mall looks at you. So you have to be able to, um, to uh, accept that level of accountability and, you, and it's, it's all the time. The, the whole time you're out there, you're accountable to yourself, to your partner, to your outfit and to the citizens you serve. If you like that kind of challenge and if you uh, don't mind paperwork, <laughs> then policing may be for you. Policing is very much a team effort. Um, it's not for the lone wolf uh, and it's not for the faint of heart. But as far as a rewarding career goes, I, again, if I were to do it again, I think I'd do it exactly the same.